What is going on guys, welcome to a new video. So today then, I wanna show you guys three niches that are gonna be absolutely huge in 2019. Also, I wanna discuss the marketing strategies behind each individual niche as well, because it's one thing to show you the niche, but unless you know how to market it, actually move forward and sell your products, then you don't stand a very good chance of actually being successful. So, that being said, that's the topic. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the video, and let's get straight into it. What is going on then guys, welcome to my computer. So let's jump straight into it then, and number one is the cycling niche. Now, don't leave the video, I'm gonna to prove to you then why the cycling niche is gonna be so big this year, and there's just so many reasons to go through. So number one, there's so many different lines of products. So you've got cycling glasses, you've got cycling clothing, like bandanas, shorts, uh, t-shirts, tops, and then you've also got cycling lights, and there's just so many other different things you can get, cycling bags, different attachments for your bike. So number one is there's so many different options in terms of products, so when it comes to things like bundle offers, cross sales, upsells, then there's so many different opportunities that when you actually get somebody onto your store just to buy one cycling product, it's gonna be so much easier to get them to buy, say, two or three. The second point as well is that when it comes to buying cycling gear, or at least I've found from my own personal experience, that things are really, really expensive. So just to kind of show, or just to kind of prove that point, if we just go on Halfords, so if you're from the UK, you'll know who Halfords are. I'm not sure, I'm pretty sure they don't have it in the US. But if you just look at this cycling night, so it's 50 pound, which is quite a lot for a cycling night. And kind of like the key features, if we look at the key features, it's 1600 lumens and it's rechargeable. And then here is a cycling light on AliExpress, over 250, like near enough five star votes. It's 2000 lumens, so it's more lumens, it's a brighter torch, and it's rechargeable as well. So they pretty much do exactly the same thing. Halfords are selling that for 50 pound, and you can buy something that looks, to me, like a better product for only seven pounds. So in terms of markup then, I just think there's a huge, huge, huge market, especially in the UK, for somebody to come in and start selling pretty much cycling gear, any sort of cycling products um, aimed at people who can't necessarily afford to pay these like really expensive prices. Kind of like a budget cycling store if you like. And then the third reason is just the sheer size of the market. So just a couple of stats for you. Here is a report generated by .gov.uk. So this is just in the UK. And as you can see, the amount of trips since, 2000 is, since 2002 has increased only slightly, but that's a good sign that there's still as many, if not more. It shows that the market is consistent and it means that the market isn't just gonna drop off. If anything, it's getting more and more popular. If you look at the next graph, there's more and more miles being covered each, pretty much on each and every year. So it's a sign of a growing market. More and more people are getting on their bike and traveling to work or or wherever they're going, there's more and more people riding their bikes. So this market is increasing and it's absolutely huge. Again, just a couple of numbers just to prove it. During 2013, so we're going back a few years now, 3.3 um, million bicycles were sold in the UK compared to 2.2 million cars. So there's actually more bikes being sold in the UK than there are cars. And I actually weren't personally aware of it. I didn't actually think the cycling market was as big as it is. So it just shows it's absolutely huge. Um, and definitely, definitely, definitely a lot of potential in there. So in terms of marketing then, Facebook is great. I would definitely go down the Facebook route for this product just because there's so many different interest and so many different locations so for a start obviously every major city pretty much in the world is going to have a massive cycling community there's going to be so many people cycling to work so that would probably be where i start i would start with all the major cities london manchester leeds um, go for all the big cities in america as well because they're all going to have big populations and enough people who commute to work and what i think would work really really well is a bundle offer you can have different kind of bundle packages for the starter so somebody as you can see more and more more people are starting to spend time on a bike so those people who are buying a new bike you could offer different kind of starter package starter packages for them so it could be pretty much everything all in one set let's say 200 quid and 200 pound isn't a lot of money to spend in the cycling niche as you can see some people spend 50 quid just on a light so in terms of profitability and the actual size of the market as well um, definitely 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 a lot of potential to be had so that's number one then guys i hope you enjoyed it hopefully you agree with the points that i've been making um, if you're enjoying the video so far please do make sure you hit that like button and that being said they're moving on to number two and 
I like to give out different niches that you might not have seen before with different marketing strategies. So number one then was definitely one you could go down Facebook. And number two then, which you don't hear a lot of people talking about then, is I would, in terms of this kind of product here, I would definitely go with the YouTube influencers. Now I haven't, I've not done zero video on YouTube influencers. So if you do want me to start doing more videos on that kind of topic, then make sure you let me know because you don't hear many people talking about it. It's definitely not as tapped or as popular as Instagram influencers. Influencers, so it's definitely a good place to go um, for that type of marketing. So number two then is men's jewelry or men's accessories. Now the reason I think this is such a good niche then, um, quite a few reasons really. Number one is perceived value, and that is in fact that all of these products, if you just look at them, they're pretty cheap, and you could easily sell some of these for twenty pounds. So that gives you a lot of room for your Facebook ad purchase cost or whatever it is. And plus, in terms of branding, then the opportunity is huge. Just to show an example is this website here North Skull you might have seen them before now I'm not saying these guys are drop shipping or sourcing their products from Aliexpress I don't think they are that I'm pretty sure they're custom made and they're probably better quality materials as well but just look at the kind of prices they're charging for these bracelets and they look pretty much exactly the same like here's one here if you just look at the design of the two skulls and then the way it fits together now this one like correct me if I'm wrong looks pretty much exactly the same and they're charging 140 pounds for this and in terms of popularity then of men's bracelets if we just have a quick look on Google Trends as you can see the market is really stable there's been a steady increase all the way since 2008 so that's a really good sign what we don't want are these lines to be too sharp because that illustrates or too much of an increase too quickly because that illustrates a trending product and what that means then is that at any point that bubble could burst and and sales for that product just dramatically drop. So just to kind of illustrate that, if we have a look at the history of fidget spinners, everybody knows about the whole fidget spinner bubble. As you can see, there was a massive spike of interest and because it was trending then, it just, the bubble burst and then it went down to pretty much zero. But because this has been a steady increase then, it shows the market is solid and it shows that people, more and more people are buying these and they will continue to as well. So in terms of marketing then, I would definitely recommend influencer marketing, either Instagram or YouTube. And just to kind of show you an example, um, one company that I've been following and watching for quite a while actually is Movement Watches or MVMT Watches. This is their website. They're one of the biggest sites on Shopify. And just to show you guys, this is their total visits um, per month. And as you can see, they're regularly getting over a million visits per month, if not more, more closer kind of to like 3 million. And the majority of their traffic then comes from influencers. So here's one person I watch on YouTube. There's loads. If you go out and just do your research, you'll find loads of people endorsing their products. And as you can see, he's got their link here in his video description. He's got nearly a million subscribers. So him alone is going to be driving a significant amount of traffic. And that's what's so attractive about these bracelets as well is the fact that these bracelets are all about looking good, being fashionable and feeling good. So in terms of finding influencers as well, to be an affiliate and endorse your products then it's just going to be so many different avenues you can go down it can be fitness influencers fashion influencers just anybody who likes your bracelet and the beauty of youtube and instagram as well is that you can find these micro influencers i mentioned them briefly in a previous video there's going to be a lot more content coming out on this because this is going to be huge for 2019 and this is finding people with pretty much a similar following to myself. So anywhere kind of under 10,000 followers who will endorse your product at zero cost, you just send them an affiliate link and anybody who buys a product through that link, they get a cut, they get their own kind of commission fee and then you take your profit out of that. And essentially you don't have to pay anything. Once it's set up, set up they'll drive traffic to your store for free but every time somebody buys something then they just get their cut so number two then is men's bracelets definitely loads and loads of potential and i really like these niches as well that you can build brands around because brands are absolutely huge trust me the power of having a brand with a significant following if you had a million followers across all of your social medias you wouldn't have to spend a single penny on advertising you'd have so many people at your disposal organically you don't have to put a post out or create a story, a timeline, whatever it is to be able to bring that traffic in. So branding is absolutely huge. And these products just fit that, that persona and that kind of 
mold of building a brand. So number two then, men's bracelets. So moving on to number three then, the third and final one in the video and probably my favorite one as well actually. In fact, one I've been doing a lot of work on myself this year. I'm actually working with a designer on a few different designs, um, which is print on demand or more specifically then like funny t-shirts, funny designs, because these just lend themselves 100% to social media marketing. If you can come up with a funny design, design, so for example then this one, fries before guys, it's the kind of thing people will laugh at it will be relatable to them and they'll share it on Facebook and if you get a product that goes viral it goes back to that point that I made of building up a brand and getting that organic reach if you can create a product that will go viral on Facebook then people just through people sharing it you'll be able to generate hundreds and hundreds of sales if it goes viral and that's traffic you won't have to pay for either you only pay for the traffic when Facebook specifically puts it on someone's newsfeed or wherever you choose if somebody shares it you don't pay for that that's organic reach and the average Facebook person has 300 friends, so that's potentially, every time somebody shares it, potentially another 300 views that you're gonna get for free. So designs like this that are funny and kind of lend themselves to being viral designs that people find funny, wanna share with their friends, tag people in yoga and wine, then, it just lends themselves to that, to going viral. And once it does, then trust me, you'll make a significant amount of money and you'll make it very, very quickly as well. So a couple of notes then, when it comes to designs, what you wanna try and do is encompass as many interests as possible because Facebook works the best when you be as specific as possible with who you are advertising to. So this design here then, for example, yoga and wine, it's clear then who the target audience is. It's women who are into yoga and who are into wine. And because there's two interests in there, not just one when somebody sees it then they're more likely to see it and it's more likely to resonate with them and they're more likely to just see it and be like oh my god 100 that is me i love yoga and i love wine and the chances are then that person who they go to yoga with probably likes drinking wine with them as well so they've got to tag them so that's more organic reach the more specific you can be then the better so when you combine two interests then it appeals to your audience in two different ways it appeals to them in the yoga way and the wine way and the more your design or product for or in pretty much any product whether it's a dog product or physical product the more it resonates with your audience the more likely they are to buy it and the more likely they are to to engage with it share it comment it whatever it is same for this one as well main the gains be with you it's clear who the target audience is so when somebody who is into star wars and into going to the gym, keeping fit. When they see this, it's gonna really resonate with them because there's two clear interests that match their interests as well. So that being said then, hopefully you're kind of getting the gist of what I'm going on about here. Any questions at all then of course, feel free to leave a comment down below. I always do get back to every single person's question. So in terms of finding designs then, there's a few websites I wanna show you, well three in fact, um, and it's pretty simple to do. So this one, teespring.com, it really is as simple as just coming on it, searching for funny and just scrolling through, seeing what which ones catch your eye. Because if they catch your eye, the chances are they'll be catching other people's eyes as well when you start marketing them on Facebook. But you can literally, oh, I've disappeared. View, float on top. But you can literally then just search in here any sort of niche and it's gonna give you pretty cool t-shirts then in your niche. So I've just put dog in. As you can see, you've got dog and wine. Dog hair is the new black. You've got to believe that looks like some sort of pug, crazy dog lady. So all of these are pretty, like, there's a lot of potential in all of these and potential viral designs. You can also go into AliExpress as well, just search for dog t-shirt or that's all I did to find this one here. And as you can see, there's two really specific interests here. So that's a pug obviously, and it's a play on the film Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, but it says Dawn of the Planet of the Pugs. So somebody who loves that film and owns a pug, then that is like the perfect t-shirt for them. And as soon as they see it, because it's so unique and special and relevant to them, then when they see it, they'll just have to buy it. Now, in terms of how legal it is to sell a product like that, because it is still quite similar to the original. Um, judging by the fact that it's only got four orders as well, it's probably not, but it, it's a good illustration. Hopefully it puts across the point that I'm trying to make. Just find two, as many as many interests as well, really. The more specific and unique your product can be to your customer, then the better chance you have of them buying it and sharing it and spreading it and it going viral, basically. And then number three is this website here, which is called hivebros.com. Um, again, it works in the same way as Teespring. You can just come on, search by name or product, just put your niche in. But this was one particular product that I actually come across on Facebook and saved um, into my videos just to keep an eye on because 
when I saw it, it made me laugh. So the chances are when other people see it, it will make them laugh as well. So people in the biking niche would probably really, really like this t-shirt. And anybody who saw it, who knew somebody who owned a motorbike would probably buy it for them, especially around like Christmas times or birthday times, just any sort of occasion really. So what I would recommend then is do your research, probably come up with about 10 different designs that you like the look of and screenshot them. Don't copy them because depending on what website you get it through, you're not allowed to do that. On Teespring, you're not allowed. These have been uploaded by proper designers. So what you do then is you simply find ones you like, screenshot them, head over to fiverr.com, search for t-shirt designer, and as you can see, the prices are pretty cheap, so you can get designs. So if you just send them literally the screenshot of these designs and say, can you create something similar, not the same, just similar in its own style, in your own style, then you can get some pretty cheap designs, so eight pound, four pound, four pound. And as you can see, they're pretty trustworthy as well. So this guy here has got five star reviews with over 1000 reviews in total as well. So most of them will turn things around pretty quickly as well. So you can soon come up with your own print on demand business on Shopify within a week with about half a dozen, if not a dozen designs, depending on how many you wanna put on there and just get started on Facebook as soon as possible. And that being said then guys, I'm gonna wrap the video up there. If you're still watching, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do leave a like. Let me know down below in the comment section what you think to these three niches. Do you think they're good? Do you think they're bad? Uh, let me know if you're gonna be taking action in any of these ones as well. It'd be interesting to see. Um, me personally, I am going into print on demand. So let me know if you want more content on this sort of thing. Maybe I could turn it into some sort of series where I talk about what I'm doing and just show you the progress. Um, but I'll leave it up to you guys then. Let me know what you think. And that being said then, thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you all in the next one.